The five-time, yes, five-time All-Australian Matthew Lloyd is a much-loved favourite on Footy Classified and will continue to do so. He's social distancing for us tonight next door. Matthew, as we welcome you in, you've spoken to many players today. How are they feeling? Oh, they're shell-shocked uh, like everybody else, Hutchie, and often, a lot of them are questioning uh, their careers. Also, uh, do they stay on the list next year, whether they get to play football uh, at some stage later in the year. Some are hoping to prove themselves, just like a lot of draftees are. Will they get the opportunity later in the year? But I did speak to some players. May 4 is a date they have told me that they can get back to the football club, or they're hoping to at this stage. That can change. So that gives them six weeks where they have to be self-driven, self-motivated and train on their own. And, you know, a lot of them don't believe running is the issue because you can get out and run, but it's how you keep your strength on. And we've seen so many players... Got some vision here of players taking the weights home. Pretty much empty gyms you'll see at all the facilities because uh, you know they've take pretty much packed their cars. You see, uh, I think that's the Haynes from the GWS Giants, and we're taking all the equipment of what they can do at home to social distances. You've been talking about Hutchie and keep themselves fit. And in regards to running, well, they're only allowed one teammate, as far as I can understand, and a four meter rule to possibly have a kick with to at least keep your legs kicked in for that six-week period where they'll be away from the footy club. And then what happens here to the game when it resumes? We saw a different kind of game, it must be said, on the weekend, and clubs will do uh, will also have to think about how footy has changed and the game of footy within football has changed. How do you think it can change for the better and what can football learn in its darkest hour from the unfortunate circumstances? Yeah, Hutchie, not many positives come from this, but I think the players have been overcoached for far too long. I went through some team lists today. There's 11 coaches, and I'll, I'll, I'll list out some of these roles that are at the clubs. Game intelligence manager, senior performance analyst, data coordinator, IT systems administrator, performance analyst. And you look at the Essendon coaches box last year, look how many laptops there are. There's about 15 laptops in that coach's box. So you can't tell me this game hasn't been overcoached. So let's hope that we can strip it right back. I know I'm talking about job losses here, which is really sad, but I think we get back. You know, obviously we need to save some money and the game might be better off it if these players aren't as overcoached as they have been in recent years. We've talked about it for years, haven't we? Matthew talks about the footy departments, Damien, but every year we go into a season, we talk about the $100 million worth of debt held by all the clubs. And you look at that Essendon pick here and the, some of the descriptions that Matthew, descri Matthew talked about and assistant coaches at the very least earning $110,000, $120,000 for when they come into a club. Those days are gone. Yeah, they're gone. But, and, the, and the raft of measures are not going to be wound back. And whatever we get is in a competition next year, Lord O1... Um, we, we well and truly know that uh, that it'll be very different in terms of how many staff are beneath the, the senior senior that, coach. That's, that's very hard to listen to if you're sitting home and, and the support staff. It, it right is, now. it, it is. is. But I don't want to kick people when they're down here. But we've talked about this too. How much? How many hundreds of thousands of dollars did North Melbourne pay out last year on sackings to contracted people, including the senior coach, Brad Scott, who I, I guess has been stood down today from the AFL, not being an essential worker. Think, Maybe he hasn't. But um, you, couldn't, you couldn't have foreseen this. But do you think, no, no, but, but do you think but, the game got ahead of itself? Of course it did. And that's, it's not the game's fault that this has happened. I mean, it was going to be decimated anyway. But I think Matthew makes a good point. Matthew, what about players? Have we seen the last of some players? It's got me think? thinking, Caro, it's got me thinking of all the ramifications of this. And if we do not play another game, which is highly likely we do not play another game this year, I've got a list of names who... Now, could we have seen the last of these guys? And I don't want to be overdramatic, but this is a situation. High chance we don't play another game. And you know, Sean Burgon was brilliant on the weekend, but he's going to be another year older. Simpson, ugly, Ablett, ugly the greatest player the game's ever seen. Mundy, Shaw, Taylor, Westhoff, Betts. These clubs still have to make harsh decisions at the end of the year. We're still going to have a draft. There's still going to be 60 young footballers who need to enter club lists. So there's going to be some emotional decisions need to be made at season's end. Well, and I mean, the other thing against some of them is they're expensive. They're probably not as expensive mm. as they were in their peak, but we've got to work out where the salary cap lands. And then, unfortunately, the top end of the talent pool is the one that's going to come under, under the squeeze, don't we? There's every chance that the contracts that are currently in place will, will be totally ripped up. I mean, they might, be, uh, they might resemble the, the yep. duration in, in the next wave of, of, of um, job offers, but they won't be anywhere near the level of money that is, uh, is in play at the moment. And, and I really do think that it almost might be start again. And this, the 16 minutes, Lord, I, I know that's an inconsequential thing in the scheme of what we've dealt with today, but 
it might be something that helps shape the commercial narrative here. Like, oh, I crossed my mind that this is for, this is forever, and the less time spent playing means less need to train, means less money for the industry. And it, it's really hard to see that being unwound for me, and I think it's a factor in all this. Yeah, I was hoping to see more of it, Hutch, the 16-minute quarters, because I, I thought it limited the congestion around, you know, we didn't see as many you know ball-ups all the time and any, as many... Dull games. I know the game didn't have the intensity in them, but uh, yeah, I enjoyed the faster-paced football on the weekend, so it may be a thing of the future. Hey, Matthew, we love you. Look after your family, and thanks for playing a different role and keeping everyone safe in your distancing tonight. Thanks, Hutch.